Hank here with my thoughts on the PodTrack P4 Next. For the entirety of this video, you'll be hearing me on the Shure SM7B going through the PodTrack P4 Next. When you purchase the PodTrack P4 Next, you also get documentation and a Zoom sticker. The price at the time of this recording is $179.99 in the US. When it comes to the build quality, the PodTrack P4 Next has a pretty much all plastic build and firm rubber buttons. The knobs do have some give to them though. I will say this, that compared to the P2, even if you doubled the size of the PodTrack P2, the P4 is considerably heavier and it is roughly 10 and a half ounces in weight with the batteries inside. For some reason, you need four batteries for the PodTrack P2 and for the PodTrack P4 Next, you only need two. Let's go over the layout of the PodTrack P4 Next. On the top of the device, you have a power button, then the record button, a play pause button, four sound pads, four more buttons consisting of menu, tone, compression, and AI noise reduction. Below that, you have four mute buttons and then four gain knobs. I'm currently at one o'clock on the Shure SM7B getting a really good amount of gain. Underneath that, you have four headphone knobs. On the front of the unit, you have four eighth inch headphone outputs. On the left side of the device, we have 48 volts phantom power on off switch, a micro SD card slot, two USB-C ports, one for DC power and the other for USB-C connectivity to a computer, laptop, tablet, or mobile device. On the right side of the device, we have the BTA2 slash TRRS ports, a switch for XLR or phone. And then on the back, we have four XLR inputs. Please note, these are not combo jacks. And of course, on the bottom, we have the battery compartment. So I'm going to change the contrast on the desk camera so you can see the screen a little bit when we do this. And you cannot be recording while you have this. I had to stop the recording. Output the audio into the Roadcaster video in this segment. So if we want a menu dive, I change the contrast on the camera so we can see the screen a little bit. But you can press this menu button right here. And then these are up, down, and this is confirm. So like select button. They double as, which is kind of cool. So let's, uh, whoops, let's, we have file list. That's obvious what that is. That's just your recorded files. We have sound pad. Um, so if you get into the sound pad, you can set each of the sound pads and you can set the level. So let's get into one and you can set them independently too. And you can change the play mode, which is really cool. I'm going to go in there so you can have it set to hold loop. Pause, one shot, fade out long, fade out short. So I'll explain those a little bit later, but really cool that it gives you even extra functionality on sound pads that I don't recall seeing on other devices, but uh, you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that. Let's back out of that. Let's get out of sound pads. And down here you have the mic settings so you could turn on a low cut filter or you could turn on a limiter and you can select which mics they go on which i think is really cool so if you have a rowdy guest and you want to put a limiter on them you could do that next you have the sd card settings so you can format you could do a quick test full test i did a quick test and what i love about the zoom products is all of their uh, cards format the same so i can use this in the P2 and in my H6 Essential. It's back out of there. You have USB file transfer. That's pretty self-explanatory. When you're connected to the computer, you just transfer files. USB audio interface, and it will let you set the level, the mode, mix minus. And then you have the system where it's accessibility. You can set what the play key does in record, and then you can set the recording mode. So I have mine set to multi-track, or you can have it set to master only, which is a stereo track. You set the date and time, mess with the display, brightness and power saving, and selecting the battery type. Auto power off, which is kind of crazy. It's the auto power off. I'll go in there it's just so you can see it. 10 hours or never. It's like 10 hours might as well be never. 
because my batteries would be dead by then. You have the firmware that you can get into. And then you can reset all your settings. You also have a help menu in here that you could go into and it just will give you a little tiny little code for going to the website. So that is just a quick menu dive. There's a lot of options in there that are beneficial. But let's talk about the specs right now. This is a 48 kilohertz, 24 bit audio interface. It uses micro SD cards up to two terabytes. It has voice guidance for people who need accessibility. It runs on two AA batteries or via USB from a mobile battery, bus powered, or AC adapter. The USB AC adapter would need to be 12 watts or higher, five volts, 2.4 amps or higher. Now, when you use dynamic microphones on batteries, alkaline batteries would last three and a half hours. NIMH batteries would last four hours. Lithium batteries would last eight and a half hours. And if you use condenser mics, alkaline batteries would last about 20 minutes. NIMH batteries about one and a half hours and lithium batteries about two and a half hours. When connected to a device, it is USB 2.0. And the pod track P4 next EIN for the preamps is minus 125 dBU. And the little display on it is a 128 by 64 OLED screen. So on the unit right now, I'm going to turn on some compression and you can hear what that sounds like. So I turned on compression and it raised the volume in the in-ear monitors considerably. So I'll probably have to dial this back in post so it matches the rest of the file. But this is what the compression that they've set sounds like. And it's either on or off. I don't have any settings that I've seen so far. So let's turn that back off. And this is what it sounds like with the compression turned off. Much cleaner sound, obviously. So it might be useful for some, may not for others. Now I'm going to press the tone button on this unit. All right, now, ooh, now I have the tone button pressed, and I do not like how this sounds at all. So I'm going to turn that off. Now the tone button is turned off, and ooh, that does not sound good to me at all. And I dislike, as I've stated already, that you can't seem to tweak these. It's either on or off. I'm going to play static into the phone, and I'm going to use the AI noise reduction and see what it does for it this would be an extreme case obviously but we got to test these things Now I turned off the static and the AI noise reduction, and this is what it sounds like normally. But it did a really good job of getting rid of that static, but I'll listen a little closer in post, and we'll see what we think then. When it comes to the pros, I think first and foremost, we have to commend Zoom for keeping the price down. $179.99 for this much functionality and portability and Four inputs, I think it's a really great value. Another pro, in my opinion, is the record functionality. So being able to hit the record button and then hitting the button next to it, which is the play slash pause button, and you could pause the recording so you don't have to stop and then create another file. Another pro, having the ability to record multi-track or stereo that's always appreciated in these types of audio interfaces and it gives you a lot of flexibility in post another pro i told you i'd circle back around to these sound pads and so you can have the one shot the pause the loop the hold the fade out short so at the end of whatever you're playing it will fade out with one second left of the file and then the fade out long fades out over the course of the five seconds of the ending. I think that would be much better for music and stuff. I really like that feature. I'm pretty sure it's been done before, but I can't recall what device. Another pro, it's battery powered. You just 
Gotta love it. Not only is it battery powered, but it prioritizes USB-C connectivity over the batteries when the batteries are present. I love that. And another pro is I pulled the USB-C cable out, the one for DC power. It just immediately switched to the battery power and was working continuously. I think that is super cool. Another pro is that the sound pads double as controls for playback. When you're playing back a file, you can have it skip back all the way to the beginning or go back uh, several seconds or go forward several seconds, etc. And then piggybacking on that, which I showed you earlier, is that the tone compression and AI noise reduction all double as menu dive buttons as well. We also have to give them their credit for having the independent gain headphone knobs and outputs. Another pro would be the onboard DSP. So whether you like it or don't like it, it's cool that they included the option to have it. You would like to see some granularity there though in the future. Another pro for me is the grips on the bottom of the device. I have a real slippery desk and it's able to hug the desk when I tug on cords pretty well for its size. Another pro I'll put on the screen right now, Zoom shares the signal chain for those of us who really want to nerd out on that type of stuff. I think it's really cool that they shared that and it gives you clarity on how the sound is from start to finish, what order it's going in. And then as I said earlier, the accessibility is also a big pro because there are people who require that and it's great to keep including that type of functionality at the top of the list on the cons front is the inputs not being combo jacks not sure why i chose to do that even though i'm listing this next con early on it is my biggest con of the unit so far and is the headphone output is super quiet i compared it to the podtrack p2 and it is half or less than half of the volume output. I can max gain a 16 LUFS podcast and put the headphones on. No issues. Doesn't hurt my ears at all. So not sure what's going on with that, but I was very disappointed that the headphone outputs aren't louder. Another con, if you want to use wireless, you're going to have to buy the BTA2. So you Got to make another purchase if you want to use that functionality. Another con is you have the either or or. <laughs> so you either have the BTA2, you have the TRRS, or you have XLR4. Another con that I mentioned earlier, there's just no way to fine tune tone and compression. I would love to see that in a firmware update. Another con, 48 volts phantom power is either on for all channels or it's off. Another con, in my personal opinion, is the USB ports are on the side and not on the back. I just want all my cables cascading off the back. Can we change that, Zoom, please? Pretty please? Another con, while you do get sound pads and you do get some nice flexibility around them, how come we can't have sound pad banks where we can do some special button press and then we have another row of sound pads so we could double them up and they could be eight at least another con and you may think this is a nitpick but i think it's a con is once again we have a special format for sound pad effects so that file format must be wave with a sample rate of either 44.1 or 48 kilohertz and a bit depth of either 16 bit or 24 bit i am not a huge fan of this specific file type sometimes you just want to take an mp3 file and just drag it onto a sound pad and just go on about your business you don't have to worry about converting to some certain format another con like i mentioned earlier we've got the all plastic body and then we got some pretty good wobble there in the knobs another con for me since i'm old <laughs> it's just tiny little screen look how small this is it's just really hard to see it and just a few notes if your recording exceeds two gigs then it's going to start another recording but they say that there's no gap in between the two files it'll just feel like one solid file when you load it into your daw another note is on windows if you're going to use this with a daw 
that supports ASIL, there's a driver you have to go get. Obviously, you get the driver from the Zoom official web page, and you got to make sure that you're not connected to the computer when you're doing that installation. So for me, the biggest disappointment are the headphone outputs. Other than that, I can live with most of the things that I have as cons. All in all, $179.99, I think the value is there for that price point. I think they could have even pushed this unit to roughly, I think my ceiling would have been $229.99. So about $230 and under, I think you're good to go with this. But more than that, it would have been a stretch with the limitations that I've pointed out in this review. I think it's a decent unit, not perfect by any stretch, but a nice addition to the Zoom lineup. I'll end this video on this note. Zoom is pretty much the only company left that actually makes products in order. Podtrack P2, Podtrack P4, I would assume a refresh to the Podtrack P8 will be coming. But if you've noticed, a lot of the other companies like Rode and Tascam and stuff, they start out bigger and then they, then they make smaller stuff to get that sale. I know this was on the longer side, but I just wanted to give you a thorough look at the Podtrack P4 next. Please subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you.